we are starting the module 1 of structural analysis 2 this is the syllabus for module 1 it includes derivation of three moment equation and application of three moment equation for analyzing continuous beams under the effect of applied loads and uneven support settlement note that Laplace theorem are only used for analyzing continuous beams now before moving on to first module let's have an introduction for structural analysis the main objective of structural analysis is to determine the reaction at supports and also to determine the internal forces and corresponding displacements of all the structural elements as well as those of the entire structural system then the forces must satisfy static equilibrium not only for the entire structure but also for any part taken as a free body diagram. The displacement in the structure must satisfy geometrical continuity and should be compatible with support condition. Now let us go through some terms. First one is structure. The structure is the one which supports the load and also transfers the load to the ground. Some basic examples are beams, columns, dams, etc. Now, structure is classified into three skeleton structure, surface structure, and solid structures. First, skeleton structures are those which can be idealized to a series of straight or curved lines, that is, 2D structures. Examples are roof truss, building frames, etc. Then, surface structures are those which can be idealized to a plane or curved surface. Example, slab, shelves, etc. Third one are solid structures. Solid structures are those which can neither be idealized to a skeleton or surface structures. Now, again, skeleton structures can be classified into two pin jointed structures and rigid jointed structures. Now, pin jointed structures, also known as pin jointed frames. The members of a pin jointed frames are connected by means of pin joint. These frames support the applied load by developing axial forces in the members. Pin jointed members are truss. Next is rigid jointed frame. Here the joints are assumed to be rigid so that the angles between the members meeting at the joints remain unchanged. The frame resists external forces in the case of rigid jointed frame by developing bending moment, shear force, axial force and also sometimes by using twisting moment in the member of the frame. These are the actual frames which we use for analyzing. Now, what are determinate structures? Determinate structures are those which can be analyzed with the help of equilibrium equations. And indeterminate are those which cannot be analyzed with the help of equilibrium equations alone. Some examples for determinate structures are beams or trusses with both ends simply supported or one end hinge and another on rollers or a cantilever type beam. Indeterminate structures are fixed beams, continuous beams, propped cantilevers, etc. Indeterminate structures are also called redundant structures. Next is statical indeterminacy. Statical indeterminacy or degree of static indeterminacy or degree of redundancy may be defined as additional equations required to determine the unknowns. There are two types of statical indeterminacy. First one is external static indeterminacy and second one is internal static indeterminacy. External static indeterminacy is related to the support system of the structure and internal static indeterminacy is related to members of the structure. Some examples for finding 
static indeterminacy are given static indeterminacy is determined or is found out by the equation dsi is equal to number of unknown reaction minus number of equilibrium equation so first example is for beam condition for beams the equilibrium equations are taken as 2 and for finding unknown reactions here the horizontal forces are not considered so for the case 1 you can see that it's a beam with both ends fixed so in the case of a fixed support neither horizontal moment or vertical moment nor moments are possible so the unknown reactions there are vertical horizontal as well as moment but here for the beam we are not considering horizontal force so two on either sides so number of unknown reaction is 2 plus 2 4 minus equilibrium equation is 2 so 4 minus 2 is 2 is the statical indeterminacy for first b similarly we can find out for all other beams now when a hinge is there in beam the equation is equilibrium uh, number of unknown reaction minus equilibrium equation minus hinge so the term hinge is calculated as given in the figure if the hinge is formed by joining three members then the hinge is calculated as number of members joining minus 1 that is 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 but in this case it is 2 members joining at a hinge so 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 that is the hinge taken here next for finding the static indeterminacy in the case of frame we are using the equation 3m plus r minus 3j where m is the number of member n number of unknown reaction and j number of joint here the unknown reactions are when the unknown reactions are taken for uh, the frames we are taking horizontal vertical as well as moment that is the r value here would be 3 for each support depending upon the support given there so for the first frame that number of members is 3 unknown reaction since it is fixed for each support there would be three unknown reactions vertical horizontal and moment so considering the both supports the total reaction would be six and the joins are four so while putting on in the equation 3m plus r minus 3j the static indeterminacy is obtained as 12 similarly we can carry out the procedure for other frames also next third is given truss for truss static indeterminacy is found out by the equation dsi is equal to internal indeterminacy plus external indeterminacy that is small i plus e internal indeterminacy is calculated by using the equation small i is equal to m minus 2j plus 3 and external indeterminacy e is equal to number of unknowns minus 3 so let's check out the first truss dsi is equal to i plus e here i is equal to equation m minus 2j plus 3 so here the number of member is 6 minus 2j that is number of joints number of joint is 4 plus 3 so i is 1 e is equal to number of unknowns minus 3 here the number of unknown is 3 2 for 
hinge support and one for roller support so small i internal determinacy is 1 and external indeterminacy is 0 so dsi is equal to i plus e that is 1 plus 0 is equal to 1 similarly we can find out for the second dress also next topic is degree of freedom or degree of kinematic indeterminacy it is defined as number of unknown independent joint displacement in excess of compatibility condition degree of freedom is equal to total number of possible conditions for displacement minus number of available compatibility condition so let's check the example for the first beam the degree of freedom is here the total number of possible conditions are 6 minus number of available compatibility condition that is among the 6 which all are not possible so for a hinge support only moment is possible and for a roller support also only moment is possible so basically a degree of freedom is what all are possible so we can find out by using the equation total possible conditions so the total possible conditions which can be taken are 6 3 for each supports minus number of available compatibility condition that is minus the conditions which are not possible so for a hinge support vertical as well as horizontal moment is not possible and for roller support also vertical and horizontal moment is not possible so the equation becomes 6 minus 4 which is equal to 2 similarly we can find out others too for frame also frames are of two types symmetric and unsymmetric unsymmetric frames are sway frames so uh, in the same way as that of beam we can find out degree of freedom for frames also next third one is truss for truss also the degree of freedom is found out in the similar manner but it should be noted that at the free node there would be two degree of freedom that is one vertical and one horizontal Now, next is the methods for analysis of statically indeterminate beams. There are basically two methods. First one is force method or flexibility method. And the various force methods are moment, method of consistent deformation, three moment theorem, column analogy method, elastic center method, Maxwell's Mohs equation. So, most of the methods are already studied by you. Here, for force method, we are only looking up into three moment there. Now, second method is displacement method or stiffness method. It includes slope deflection method, moment distribution method and Canis method and also minimum potential energy method. So, here in STA2, we are looking for three methods for displacement method that is slope deflection method, moment distribution method and Canis method. Now, below there are the pictures showing fixed end moments for various loading conditions. First one is for center loading. For center loading, the fixed end moments, that is the moments occurring at the fixed ends are minus WL by 8 on both sides and the reactions are W by 2, W by 2. Second one is a fixed beam with UDL of W per meter intensity. Here the fixed end moments are WL square by 12 on both sides and the reaction is WL by 2. Third one is an eccentric loading. Eccentric loading is that which is not directly at the center of a beam but at a particular distance away from the beam. That is the distance from left support to load is not the same value as that of the distance from right support to the load that is known as eccentric loading so for an eccentric loading 
the left fixed end moment is W A B square by L square. That is minus W A B square by L square. Right side W A square B by L square. 